For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one whose heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 21 is where we will begin today as we're going through Corinthians. And so this is the gospel of the resurrection is what this chapter is about. And it's about when the dead shall be raised as Christ was. And verse 21 says, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Notice that for since by man came death. You see, it was because of Adam. He sinned and he brought sin into the world and that brought death. And by that, death passed upon all men. So it was by man that death came came into the world that was not God's design is what I'm trying to tell you it was man that brought death and through the world and through that sin death passed upon all men and so it is handed down from one generation to the other as I was handed down I was a sinner when I was born and I have a, a, a children, and when they were born, they were sinners. Why? Because I am, and it's passed down. But Jesus Christ came to die on that cross to break the curse, to settle the debt. And that debt is sin. And you know, there is wages for that. For the, It is death. That is the payment for sin. It is death. But through the Lord Jesus Christ, death can be defeated. And so through his sin, through Adam's sin, death came upon all men. But listen, God sent his son into the world as a man in order to undo that work. So that us as believers could be raised from the dead through the power and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, because when you are saved, a piece of God himself is put inside you, a piece of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible is talking about when it says you're sealed unto the day of redemption. A piece of God himself is put inside of you. And the same power, the same resurrecting power that rose Jesus from the dead, once you're saved, now dwells within you because you are a Christian. You're a child of God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You belong to the Lord. And so God wants each and every person to be saved, but it is a personal choice. God will not force that on you. God will not force eternal life on you. It is your choice. Amen. But God wants you to choose him and he has done everything that he can possibly do to redeem what Adam did by bringing sin into the world and death and death passed upon every man. Jesus Christ has come to bring life and bring life more abundantly. Amen. What does the Bible say about the devil? The devil, he come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to bring life and life more abundantly. What do you have to do to go to hell? Absolutely nothing. Why? Because we are all sinners. Each and every one of us has lied, has stolen, and worse and worse and worse things than that. But if you just did one of those one time, 
that makes you a sinner. And oftentimes, we try to judge ourselves by our own standards or by a man's standard. And by man's standard, you might be pretty good. You see, religion will keep you out of jail, but it won't keep you out of hell. By God's standards, each and every one of us, each and every one of us does not deserve anything but a place called hell. But because God loved us so much and sent his son to die on that cross, hey, each and every one of us can be resurrected when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. Listen to what verse 22 says. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam and Christ, listen, Adam and Christ affected the whole world by their action. Isn't that amazing? That Adam, what he chose to do affected the whole world, not just a person, not just his family, but every person that will ever be born after that. It affected them because it brought death into the world. And what Jesus Christ did affected the whole world. Even if a person rejects Christ and doesn't want anything to do with Christ, what Christ did affects the whole world because he offers forgiveness and he offers eternal life. And those who choose to be born into God's family will have eternal life. Like the Bible says in that verse 22, the last part, so in Christ shall all be made alive. That's all who accept him as their personal savior. It is not a blanket salvation where Christ came to die on the cross and the whole world saved. You don't have to do anything. No, the Bible says that you must believe. The Bible says you must be born again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. When the, when the soldier uh, ran in to where Paul and Silas was at and the wall had fell down and they could have ran. And this guard, this officer realized that they didn't ran. And these two men had been out preaching in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what they got for? They got beaten and they got thrown into the inner prison. And that Roman soldier was charged with watching them. And if they had gotten away, that Roman soldier would have paid for that with his life. And the Lord made the wall fall down. They could have got up and walked away in that jail cell. And by the way, they were in there singing praises unto the Lord. Amen. As we should too. Oftentimes, man, we get so hurt that somebody said something or this happened, or these two men were beaten almost half to death and thrown into prison for nothing more than preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as they're singing praises to God, God makes the wall fall down, and, and, and they could have easily walked out. And the Bible says that guard sprang in and saw, and, and he, Paul said, hey, we're still here. And that guard right then said, he said, what must I do? to be saved. He wanted what they had. Listen to me, Christian. What you do in the hard times, what you do, what you say, and the way that you act in the hard times and when the bad things happen has a great effect on non-Christians. They are watching you. And when you go through hard times and you still trust God and you sing praises unto the Lord as they did, hey, just like that soldier, he fell down. He said, what must I do to be saved is what he asked him. And you know what they answered? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Like that verse says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That soldier, that guard wanted what Paul and Silas had. He said, hey, I, I want what you have. I see you've been beaten. You've been thrown in prison. You could easily be headed, be beheaded in the morning, but yet you are singing praises unto God. I want what you have. So be careful, Christian, how you act and what you say. And the way that you go about things and the way that you handle situations, make sure, make sure that you are having a good testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in the end, hey, we do want others to be saved. I like what Charles Purgeon said. 
said, if you don't, if you don't wish for others to be saved, you're not saved yourself. So I dare say, Christian, you need to look with inside yourself and make sure, make sure that you have truly been born again. Because if you are, I guarantee you, you're going to want others to be saved too. You're going to want others to have what you have. Because all who are in Christ are made alive. And listen to me, only believers in the Lord Jesus Christ will be raised from the dead to dwell with Christ for all eternity. It's only those believers that have that have died that have been born again. They may their body may have died, but their their soul went to be with the spirit. But at the resurrection, their body will raise and their soul and they'll meet in the air and they'll have their eternal glorified body and they will forever we will forever be with the lord amen and i look forward to that day verse number 23 but every man in his own order christ the first fruits afterward they that are christ at his coming the bible says christ the first fruit so first is the resurrection of Christ himself. He is that is what he's, that's what it's talking about here. When it says the first fruits it's talking about Christ. Now here, now you say well, wait a minute. There are some in the in the Bible that rose from the dead. Yes, you're absolutely right. There were some that rose from the grave before Christ. How about the the case of Lazarus? When Jesus called him, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus was raised from the dead. The widow's son and Jairus' daughter in the New Testament. But listen to me. There is a major difference between them and Christ rising. Christ's resurrection was different from all of those in the fact that when Christ rose, he rose forever. He will never, ever die again. He will go on with those that rose from the grave. Lazarus, the widow's son, Jairus' daughter. They may have rose from the grave, but they died. They got old and died, or they got sick and died. However, they perished. The Bible doesn't say. But we do know that they rose from the grave, but they still one day perished where Christ rose from, from the grave, and he is alive forevermore, forevermore. And so you could heal every person of every sickness there ever was, but they're still going to get old and die. But listen to me. When you share with them the words of Christ, it give them eternal life, that they're born again, born into the family of God. Hey, you have given them all that matters. Because even when this body gets old and died, hey, we'll be resurrected when Christ comes back. Amen. Give them eternal life. And so the second group in the resurrection is described as those who are at Christ's coming. When Christ comes back, the dead and Christ will rise first. They will come up out of the grave and they will meet Christ in the air, in the clouds, the Bible says. And then, like if Christ come back right now and I'm alive, those that are alive, us, will be caught up with them. And so the dead in Christ will rise first. And it doesn't matter where they are, if they were lost at sea, if they were buried, if they were cremated or where they're at, Jesus is going to raise them from the grave. He has the power to call his people because, listen, once you are born into the family of God, you take your last name and you were born into that family. There's nothing that you can ever do to undo that. Even if you can go change your last name, you can change everything about you, but it doesn't matter. You are still born into that family, and that is who you are. And when you are born into the family of God, that is who you are, and nothing will ever change that. You belong to God, and you will forever be with Him in heaven. The Bible says that no man, can pluck them out of my Father's hands. Once a person is born, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it's written in pen, not in pencil. God's not going to erase it. You're not going to mess up and lose your salvation. No, sir. No, ma'am. You can have faith and confidence in what Christ did on the cross and in His promises, not yours, but in His and so if, we, if you look in First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17, it tells you, 
In verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain of the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, the Bible says that death stalks every man. Death stalks every woman. Death stalks everyone that is alive. We tend to think that we're tough. And as a, as a man, you tend to think, well, I'm, I'm pretty tough, or there's some tough guys out there. But I tell you what, two minutes without air, they're not so tough. A few days without water, they're not so tough. We're not as tough as we think we are. Life is so fragile. You're just one heartbeat away from death. You see, it doesn't matter. You should take good care of yourself. Amen. I believe in that. You should try to eat healthy. You should not try to gain too much weight. You should try to exercise if it's possible. You should drink plenty of water. I believe in all that. Absolutely. But you know, there's one thing that I can't do and you can't do. You can't make your own heart beat one single time. That's so far out of your control. And that's in God's hands. God is the one that makes your heart beat. God is the one that gives you life. Amen. Now, that's not an excuse to not take care of yourself. You should. But at the same time, you need to realize that your hand, your, your life is in God's hands. Amen. Let's look back at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. The expression then comes the end. Refers, that's, when it says the end, it's talking about the end of the resurrection. At the close of Christ's millennial reign, which is the thousand year reign, he shall have put down all his enemies and there will be the resurrection of the wicked and of the dead there will be but that last resurrection will take place and whoever has died in unbelief will stand before the judgment of god at the great white throne to hear their doom to be cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity and boy that is horrible I don't want anyone to go there. I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go there. It is a horrible place. It is so bad that one day that hell itself, the Bible says, that death and hell itself will be cast into the lake of fire. I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go there. Not that I have any enemies. I want everyone to be saved. It's that serious, ladies and gentlemen. So after the millennial raise and the destruction of Satan, the Lord Jesus is going to deliver the kingdom of God to the Father. Amen. And by then, Christ, he'll have abolished all rule and all authority. He will be the supreme leader. Amen. And ruler because he has all power. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10, it says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I'm here to tell you that that is what hell was created for. That's what the lake of fire was created for. Listen, the devil that deceived them, that's what that place was created for, for the devil and his band of angels. It was not created for me or for you. God made a way for me and you to be redeemed, to be right with God. The devil and the demons, they have no way 
of repentance. They have no way to get right with God, but Jesus loved you enough to make a way he sent his son to die on that cross so that you could be right with God, so that your sins could be wiped away, so that your name could be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Will you accept it today? Do you know that you know that you know that you have been born again? Do you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Look, Lamb's Book of Life? Because if not, you, just like the devil, will be cast into that fire to be forever tormented day and night, forever and ever. There is no relief in hell. There is one place in the Bible in Luke chapter 16 where the Bible literally records the voice and the thoughts of a man in hell. And I'm telling you, that man is still in hell to this day. That man asked, could somebody, could Lazarus, could he just take the tip of his finger and dip it in water and touch my tongue? That's how tormented I am. And he even asked, please send someone to my father's house to warn my brothers, do not come to this place. I've always referred to him as the evangelist from hell because I don't know his name. But he certainly didn't want his family to go there. And I'm here to tell you, when you're saved, you don't want your family to go there. You want your family to go to heaven. You want your family to be born again. You want your family to be followers of Christ. You don't want them to be in a devil's hell. And if you've ever heard that saying, a devil's hell, that's why they call it that. That's where the saying came from. Because hell was made for the devil and his angels. And so that's where they get that saying, the devil's hell, because that's who it was made for. Look with me now in verse 25, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And it's talking about Christ. Christ will reign. Christ will put every enemy under his foot. He will be on the throne. His word will be fulfilled. He will reign. Amen. And I look forward to that day. I look forward to that day when Christ is forever reigning, when all of sin has been removed from the earth and we can forever be in the presence of a thrice holy God. I look forward to that day. Amen. What a glorious day that will be. Just like the song says, what a glorious day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. I look so forward to working, to walking and talking with him and fellowshipping with him. I look forward to leaving this old dirty world behind and all this sin and all this hurt and all this pain and all this suffering. I look forward to that day when we don't have that anymore. Amen. But listen to me. I want each and every person on the sound of my voice and that I know I want them to be saved. I want them to be born again. I want them to be in the family of God. And here, Jesus Christ and the Apostle Paul is warning you about, hey, you need to get right with Jesus. Jesus. And verse 26 tells you the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I want you to notice that the Bible refers to death as an enemy. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, the Bible says. So even during Christ's millennial reign, people will continue to die. But one day, death itself will be destroyed. It will be cast into the lake of fire. And it tells you that in Revelations chapter 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And that second death can also be when a person dies and they stand before God at that great white throne judgment and he casts them into the lake of fire because he says, I don't know you. You may have been a, a school teacher or a Sunday school teacher. You may have been church. But depart from me, ye works of iniquity. I never knew you. Please make sure that you are right with God, that you have repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. 9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? 
you can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.